Welcome to Colonel Basketball Weekly, featuring the head coaches of Nickel State University Basketball, J.P. Piper and Doobie Plaisance. Colonel Basketball Weekly is presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. Colonel Basketball Weekly is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, either you're local or you're not. Good afternoon and welcome to Colonel Basketball Weekly. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. The Nichols women's basketball team had a shot on Saturday to complete a season series sweep of southeastern Louisiana for the first time since a 1998-99 season. While the Colonels entered Saturday's matchup against the Lady Lions in sixth place in the Southland standings, they were just two and a half games behind second place Lamar. Outside Stouffer Gym on Saturday, the Endymion parades were rolling. The Colonels were doing the same inside. K.K. Babin, coming off a 32-point performance a week ago, picked right up where she left off. First minute, the bonus ball off the inbounds. The Colonels were 6 of 10 from beyond the arc in the first half. Alicia Allen's jumper builds a lead to 26 to 16. Allen is averaging 18.5 points a game at home this season. Less than six minutes left before the break, Jamika Hoskins drains a three. She scored 12 points. It's a seven-point game here. But back-to-back -back buckets by Imani White spark a 17-4 run to close out the half. White off the bench goes six of seven from the field. Nichols up by 20 at the break. The second half was a different story. Southeastern scores the first seven points. Brandy Simmons connects from the short corner. She racked up a team-high 18 points. Under 12 and a half to play, Elizabeth Stiles with the three in transition. The Colonel lead is down to 10. Now the Lady Lions whittled it all the way down to three before Nichols finds a way to break the press. Hope Pulowski with a big bucket to stop the bleeding. It remains nip and tuck though into the final minute. Up four, Nichols can't put it away. Jasmine Scott short on the free throw. Hoskins snags the rebound ahead to Erica Hernandez. Now she would miss the three here from the corner. But Simone Miller follows, 67-65 Nichols with 12 seconds remaining. But the Lady Lions put the senior, Allen, at the line. She calmly nails the first and then the second to seal it. Allen with a team-high 18 points. Nichols wins it 69-65. Jasmine Scott came off the pine and went 7 for 11 from the field. 14 points four, and 4 steals as the Colonels improved to 14-8 and eight on the season and 6-5 and five against the South. And Nichols is one win shy of tying the program record for victories established last year. While Nichols came away triumphant on Saturday, head coach Doobie Plaisant spoke with us about what it's going to take for her club to put teams away earlier. One word, oh, one skill, rebounding. To the naked eye, it might have looked like we were missing shots, uh, possibly some turnovers in the press, but that was not indicative to that run that Southeastern had gone on. Uh, th they cut into our deficit, quite frankly, because of rebounding or lack thereof. You know, we have to be far more aggressive offensively, um, obtaining more possessions for us, as well as on the defensive end. We just can't give them second and third shot opportunities. The percentage will be in their favor. And then one... One scout uh, differential in the first half, the scout was to front and not give them those touches and on the block. And for whatever reason, we were not fronting. So when they got those touches or received those touches, they were able to get to the free throw line and uh, put us in foul trouble. So that was indicative also, the tension of details and then just rebounding. You know, rebounding at the end of the day, you know, we, we want to win this championship. We want to make a run for this championship. It's all about the rebounds at the end of the day. We because we're we're right now, we are sitting at the top in terms of percentage from the field and three pointers made. We have the offensive package. We need to rebound. <laughs> Did I, have I mentioned we need a rebound? <laughs> you, you, I think you might have mentioned it once or twice. I'm sure you'll keep preaching it to your team though. Even at this late late stage of the season, you're still tinkering with your lineup a bit. And Jasmine Scott, last few games, has come off the bench. What a performance she had on Saturday! Absolutely, and she was she was one that ha she's had a good week of practice this week, and I'm very excited about her in terms of her production. And you know, coming off the bench, not that she's comfortable there, but 
it might give her a little bit of time to get into the flow of the game. And but you know, between her and Amani White coming off the bench, you know, arguably those could be two starters. Also, I have seven starters. <laughs> you got Stephen F. Austin at home this week, along with Northwestern State. You saw these teams on the road a couple of weeks ago. Came away 0 and 2. How do you come away 2 and 0 after this week? With Stephen F. Austin, what we need to do is we need to ensure that they turn the ball over. And because um, I, I felt like our press and our defense was very effective against them, and we did force a lot of turnovers, we just have to convert off those turnovers. And we didn't necessarily give up a whole lot of threes against Stephen F. They were contested, but for whatever reason, they were going in. So we have to make sure we uh, contest their threes squared so <laughs> they don't get those threes, and again, convert off their turnovers. Because I was very, very I was very excited about the effort our women gave down uh, at Stephen F. And you know, I, I believe I believe that tonight's going to be a different outcome. How about Northwestern State here on Saturday? I have to give it uh, to uh, that coaching staff over there. They're a new coaching staff. Uh, Brooke and her husband has come in there, and, and they're just doing an excellent job. And I don't know what's going on in uh, at, on their home court, but they, they have everybody's number down there. But uh, they're a team that that they're on a roll right now. They're playing well, and you know they have a, a guard. Um, uh, their, their guard play is, is picking up, and you know it, it's just going to be. We, we had, I think, two. I want to say two uh, runs on them where we we were up by double digits at their place, and again we let that go, and we just have to make sure that we can get the runs and then sustain the runs and just not get complacent with them. That game against the Lady Demons coming up on Saturday at 2 o'clock with the matchup with the Lady Jacks tonight. You can watch it live on ESPN3 beginning at 5.30. Thanks so much for your time, Coach. Thanks, Mike. Head Coach Doobie Plaisons. Right now we're going to send it to Pamela Johnson who has a roundup of what's going on around Nichols Athletics. Last week was an important time for the Nichols State University football team as well as college football teams across the country. All the drama and anticipation came to an end on National Signing Day as the 2013 signees were announced. On Wednesday, the Colonels football team held its annual signing day event in the Century Room in John L. Guidry Stadium. The event was free and open to the public, and those in attendance had a chance to mingle with members of the football staff. Head coach Charlie Stubbs introduced the 2013 class through commentary over video highlights of each future Colonel. You know, I feel very good about the 17 that we got because they were thoroughly recruited. Uh, what I'm talking about by there is we've been on most of these kids for well over a year. Uh, they, we got to know them, got to know everything about them from not just athletic ability but academics. They're, you know, really desire, you know, to be excellent in the classroom to their character and, uh, and their desire to really want to be here. And so I feel very good about it. Uh, it's the first stage of our recruiting efforts, but we'll do some more. And I am always patient, but I feel very good about these guys, and I feel like it meets many of our needs. It's, it's a tremendous class. Um, we've got some, uh, first of all, some great young men. Secondly, some excellent students. And then thirdly, which is obviously important, uh, some excellent football players. So, you know, I'm very pleased. Uh, I think, uh, you know, after signing day, they all, when the papers came in, the stress level dropped a little bit. Um, I mean, it never drops completely, but it dropped a little bit. So, so I feel pretty good about these guys. The Nichols baseball team hosted its yearly alumni game and first pitch banquet on Saturday. The morning festivities consisted of games played between alumni, staff, and current players at Ray E. Didier Field in Thibodeau. All right, it's a great event for Nichols baseball to get all the uh, alumni to come out here and get a chance to play with the guys that played from even back in the 70s, get a chance to see some of the ex-pros that played for Nichols, and uh, everybody's got competitive juices in them, and uh, you just hope everybody has a good time and doesn't get hurt. Uh, this is a good time, and, and Seth Thibodeau, the head coach with the uh, Colonels, has done a great job of bringing all the former players back and welcome them back to the uh, to the fold, so to speak. And it's, it's a good thing because a lot of these guys I hadn't seen in, you know, 20 years. You know, these are the people that knew me from the get-go. They weren't asking for anything at the end when I made it to the big leagues or wanting anything. These are the people I call family. I'm just looking forward to uh, getting out here and watching my team play. Uh, we got, you know, a great atmosphere out here. We got new dugouts. There's a great buzz around Nickel State. 
baseball, ready to kick off the season, and I can see everyone's excited. Today was great. Uh, you know, it's the second time we come out. Actually, second time I came out last year, you know, we kind of kicked this thing off again, and some of these guys you don't see whenever you walk off campus for, for 20 years, and, you know, whenever Seth reaches out to, to everybody to come out for a function like this, it's good to see everybody get back together. The first pitch banquet was held that evening in nearby Gray. Legendary college baseball coach Skip Bertman, a college baseball Hall of Famer who won five national titles at LSU, served as a guest speaker. The event gave Nichols head coach Seth Thibodeau an opportunity to introduce his new team. Thankfully the weather cooperated with us. We had a great time. We had a wonderful turnout with uh, probably 70 or 80 former Nichols players and our guys really enjoyed it and as did our, everyone involved with our program. For Colonel Basketball Weekly, I'm Pamela Johnson. Does State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. <laughs> that ships them off to some bundle factory. <laughs> I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse's. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready-to-serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game. And you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Nichols State University is taking education on the road, the information superhighway. If you are unable to come to campus, we are bringing the campus to you. Study at home and graduate quicker with Nichols Online. No more going to class around the school's schedule. Go to class online around your schedule. All of your courses are taught by qualified Nichols State University professors who are experts in their fields. To take that step, go to nichols.edu slash nicholsonline or email nicholsonline at nichols.edu. The bond between mother and daughter is special, but it's especially so for one all-American family. Bound by their passion for basketball, while mom builds a program, her child is building a legacy. From one university to another, their relationship stays strong. Nichols women's basketball head coach Doobie Plazons and her daughter Teresa, a star forward for LSU and an SEC Player of the Year candidate, share a connection that revolves around more than just hoops. I have a great relationship with my mom. She's like my best friend. I talk to her every single day, usually at night before I go to bed. And, um, you know, my mom's always been there for me growing up. And she's uh, always worked her hardest to try to give me and my brother the best life we could possibly have. As a kid, you know, Sometimes she wasn't there because she was out like recruiting and stuff, but she never like once did we have a night that we went without a phone call from her or a text from her saying how much she loves us and all that. I wouldn't consider us friends and I don't consider us um, like she's afraid to approach me. It's whatever you want to call what's ever in the middle. It could be, I just think it's unique. X's and O's are a small part of this relationship. To Doobie and Teresa, it's bigger than the game. You know, my mom's a very hard worker. My mom does everything and anything she can to better herself and her program. So I think what I've taken from her is just to give it my all because, you know, that's the only thing you can do and work your hardest. Because if you don't, then, you know, you never know how good you could possibly be. You never know the opportunities you may get. They will not be remembered for the amount of points they scored in the game or how many accolades was thrown their way in terms of awards. They're going to be remembered for their character, they're going to be remembered for their values, and they're going to be remembered for the type of person that they were in terms of giving back to other people. And that's how I've always uh, raised my kids. That's how I was raised. That You know, it, it, it's about giving back. That if, if people can just realize there's so much, you feel so much in giving, you know, so much comes back to you when you give, and um, that's sort of how I've raised both my children, and, and Teresa is, is turning out to be, at this point, I mean, she's a young buck, she's just 20-something years old, so I have a few more years to go with her, but if she continues on this track, you know, um, you know I told her when I dropped her off at school uh, at LSU, I said two things, 
two things out of this whole journey. A, you're going to leave this place with a degree. And B, you're going to go to church on Sundays. <laughs> After that, everything else is line up. <laughs> As a top recruit out of Vanderbilt High School in nearby Houma, Louisiana, Teresa received letters from universities across the nation, but was surprised when she didn't hear from a certain school. I, honestly, I didn't even get a letter from my mom. My mom didn't even send me a recruiting letter, so I was like, thanks, Mom. I'd go home, and I was getting like letters from everybody else, and I was like, Mom, where's my Nichols letter? And she was like, I didn't think you would pay attention to me. I was like, Mom, come on. The type of interest she, can, she was receiving very early on uh, what I mean by that is by top 25 schools. I'm like, oh, this kid. And what we decided early on, before we knew what her fate would be, that I have raised you to 18. And we felt, felt at that point that it would be best for her to play for someone other than me so hopefully they could reiterate not just the basketball piece, but the values, the, the, the high morals, the high characteristic, let her hear from somebody else other than mom, and that way it might resonate better with her. But we decided, and for me personally, I didn't, being that I thought she would be a special player, I did not want any of her accolades to be perceived, oh, well, her mother's the coach. And so she got off to, you know, a, a slow start, at LSU and now uh, due to her hard work but hard work with those coaches those coaches have invested in her they believe in her and I'll be uh, forever grateful to those coaches what they've brought out of Teresa and and now she's coming into her own and I am a very a very proud bystander and it can't be said it can't be said that oh it's because her mom's the coach and that to me was the biggest piece I would have loved to have coached her, and um, I think she would admit that she would love to have been coached by me, but at that point, she just needed to go out on her own. While Nichols and LSU are just 70 miles apart, they haven't played each other since Teresa's freshman season at LSU two years ago. That is by design. Doobie doesn't want to face the prospect of coaching against her daughter again. And the type of person that I am, whether I'm playing LSU, UConn, Notre Dame, or whoever it might be, I expect to win. And we're going in there, you know, guns a blazing, trying to beat this team. Okay? Reality sits in many times. Okay? <laughs> However, um, in preparing for that game, it was very uncomfortable because in the moment, we did everything we could to beat LSU on that occasion. As a mother, you never, ever want to see your children fail at anything. And the thought of having her in a scout, and this is what you have to do to shut down your child, it was too conflicting for me. While hoop season is in full swing for the Colonels, the stars aligned just right last Thursday as Nichols had the night off, while the Lady Tigers hosted SEC rival Tennessee in a big matchup. While Doobie doesn't get to take in many of her daughter's games in person, Thursday was a night to escape from coaching mode and turn into mom. Here I get to sit down and I can be a real fan. And it, it, it is more of a, I don't know, a sentimental type thing out here. I don't get to see my kids play much, either one of them, even my little Scotty. <laughs> but so when I do, I'm just grateful to be in the same building with them sometimes. Because the majority of the times I'm not even in the same state as them, you know. With Teresa registering eight points and three blocks by halftime, her mother took time in between cheers to break down her performance. She's down there encouraging and talking to her players and doing a lot of instructing. And that means a lot to me, not only as a mother, but also as a coach. Because every coach needs a great floor leader. And um, right now she's hitting her free throws. The only one she missed was the one that I jinxed her on. And uh, she hasn't missed a block out. And I'm not sure if she's missed a, block, uh, a defensive assignment. You know, that she's 50% for the so overall, the effort's good. Ultimately, LSU suffered a devastating loss to the 12th ranked Lady Vows. Despite a near double double performance, Teresa, the SEC leading scorer, missed a late free throw in LSU's two point defeat. As she emerged from the locker room following the game, Teresa, heartbroken, knew where to turn. 
it's always great to see mom here, you know. After a close loss like that, it's always nice to hear what she has to say afterwards. It's always positive and uplifting, so it's nice to have my mom here. She had to hang in there and, you know, games like that, there's nothing much you can do, so just hang in there and give my best next game. And what else did I tell you? You love me. <laughs> you can tell people that. <laughs> The relationship between this mother and daughter duo is like no other. Whether it's on the court or off, it's all love and basketball. It could be a while though before they catch up with each other again. Both Doobie and Teresa have full intentions of playing well into March. For Colonel Basketball Weekly, I'm Ashley Dufrin. Thanks, Ashley. And some positive news did come later in the week. On Sunday, Teresa led her team to an upset of ninth-ranked Georgia. Time to turn our attention to the Colonel men. Nichols was set to take on southeastern Louisiana in a pivotal game in Thibodeau this past Saturday. Only the top four teams in the South and standings receive a bye in the league tournament. And if Nichols picked up a win over the Lions, they'd find themselves in a tie for fourth with seven games to go. A loss, though, would drop them to sixth and would give southeastern a series sweep and therefore any tiebreaker over the Colonels. Nichols would go without starter and captain Jeremy Smith, who was ill with the flu. Fred Hunter would carry the load. The Southland's reigning player of the week put together scoring efforts of 33 and 36 points last week. And he was Johnny on the spot early in this one. Opening minute, Dantrell Thomas going baseline, misses a fadeaway, but Hunter with his stick back. However, that was just one of eight made shots for the Colonels in the first half. And LSU takes it, or SLU rather, takes advantage. Brandon Fortenberry hits the three. And Southeastern up a dozen at the eight-minute mark, part of a monster game for Fortenberry. Nichols down as big as 18. Amin Torres was a saving grace. He scored seven points in just six first-half minutes on the floor. But this play summed up the opening stanza. Final seconds, the Colonels look to roll the inbounds pass to conserve time, and Southeastern steals it. Fortenberry nails a three. The Colonels simply shook their heads. Fortenberry scored 30, going five of eight from downtown. The Colonels came to play in the second half, though. Cutting the deficit down to single digits before Roosevelt Johnson converts, he had 10 points and 8 boards. Nichols keeps chipping away though, Torres out of a timeout, making it happen, just steps right up and cans a 3. He scored 13. That was his fourth straight double-figure scoring performance. Colonels cut the deficit to 6, but Fortenberry strikes again. He's given an inch and that was just too much. Nichols would never get closer then six points. Hunter finished up with 20 of his own, six of nine from the field, seven of seven from the line, nine boards. He still leads the league in scoring, but the Colonels fall 73 to 62. Nichols dropping to sixth place or six and 15 overall, five and six against the league. The Colonels host first place Stephen F. Austin at 7.30 tonight on ESPN3. The Lumberjacks own the nation's number one defense. Saturday, Northwestern State brings the country's number one offense to Thibodeau. Head coach J.P. Piper will need his team at full strength. Without Jeremy Smith last Saturday, the Colonels simply weren't the Colonels. You know, you realize how important Jeremy is to our team. Um, you take that one guy out and he's He's our captain, but he's a guy that plays with energy. He's a defensive stopper for us. So you take him away, and uh, well, we look like a ship without a rudder at times. There were moments where we looked good, but the overall product was poor. Um, so, you know, we got to get Jeremy back in there healthy, and um, we just got to get focused on guard. We weren't good defensively for long periods of time, and you, you allow runs. Um, and... Uh, it's probably the first time this year where I didn't think we looked like ourselves. We just had a bad night. Everything went wrong. That play at the end of the half kind of summed up the night it was going to be. Um, you know, so you just you got to let that go. You got to focus on the next one. Uh, unfortunately for us, the next ones are going to be pretty difficult. Um, but you just keep moving ahead. Several more opportunities to play games, and we just we got to focus on the next one and let the last one go. The schedule does you no favors in the short term. You've got the two hottest teams in the league coming to Thibodeau this week, but four out of your final seven games are against the bottom three in the league. So this is really hump week for you here. Yeah, and it's at home. So, you know, if you're going to do something special and pull an upset, it, this would be the place to do it. Make shots at your home court. Hopefully your opponent doesn't come in and shoot the ball particularly well because they're on the road. So you always have a chance when you're at home. Uh, obviously can't play like we did on Saturday, but I don't think we'll do that again. I think we'll take a step forward, and then you're absolutely right. After these next two, which are incredibly difficult, well, look, we beat Northwestern now. So we're one of the teams in the, in the league that's been able to beat them. 
Um, you know, the schedule winds down. I, I don't think they're ever easy, but they're against teams that are below you in the standings. Uh, they're against teams that you should expect to have a chance to beat. So, uh, got to finish strong. Again, that's why we can't focus on what happened uh, on Saturday in here against Southeastern. We got to focus on continuing to compete for a conference championship, and that's what we'll try to do. TJ Carpenter, hot shooting freshman, has only averaged about six points a game over the last five contests, and that's gone hand in hand with the shoulder injury that he suffered a few weeks back. How does he compensate at this point? Well, I think there are two things at work with TJ. One is a shoulder injury, the other one is. Um, he is probably reached a point in, in terms of the season where uh, there's a bear on his back. You know, as a high school player, he hasn't had to practice this long for this hard um, from October to, to March. And then add to that that he's on the scouting report for every other team because he's a good player. So he's probably at a place he's never been in his life in terms of the difficulty if he's healthy. Then you add to that an injury and and trying to work through the psychological effects of having a bad shoulder in addition to everything else that's going on, and he's having a tough time. It's just uh, deal with it. I mean, you just you you got to find a way to fight through. We'll continue him to challenge to do that. Um, He's a tough kid. He loves to compete. Uh, Had great conversation with his mother on Saturday. She was here at the game. And coach, he wants to be on the floor. He wants to play, and I see that. So he'll find a way through it, hopefully sooner than later. Um, as long as he doesn't give up and quit competing, I think he's going to be all right. All right. Best of luck tonight, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Head Coach J.P. Piper, his Colonels take on Stephen F. Austin. You can catch it live on ESPN3 beginning at 730 this evening. We'll be right back with more Colonel Basketball Weekly presented by State Farm Insurance in just a moment. State Farm let me bundle auto, home, and life to save money? Sure. We practically invented bundling. And it all stays with State Farm. So my policies don't go to some bundling center. That ships them off to some bundle factory. I'm dealing with you and not some bungling, bustling bundle builders. Who have you been working with? Stay with the company you trust. Bundle and save with your local State Farm agent. At Rouse's, we love football. We love the players, we love the fans, and you know we love the food. So whether it's high school, college, or pros, if there's a game, we're tailgating. You can tackle your tailgate, too, with one stop by Rouse. Get Rouse's ready to grill meat, chicken, and pork, or pick up Rouse's ready to serve tailgate specials. Everything is made fresh for the game, and you know it's all good. So get the home field advantage every time you shop. Shop local. Shop Rouse's. Now that's tailgating. Nichols State University is taking education on the road, the information superhighway. If you are unable to come to campus, we are bringing the campus to you. Study at home and graduate quicker with Nichols Online. No more going to class around the school's schedule. Go to class online around your schedule. All of your courses are taught by qualified Nichols State University professors who are experts in their fields. To take that step, go to nichols.edu slash Nichols Online or email nicholsonline at nichols.edu. It's time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Either you're local or you're not. Rouse's Supermarkets are local with their roots established in Thibodeau in 1923. Trust Rouse's for great food and great values. Louisiana's best can be found at your local Rouse's or at Rouse's.com. Our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, senior men's tennis player Roy Knight. The Brit was also named the Southland Conference Player of the Week after leading Nichols to two victories while going undefeated in his three matches. In singles, he improved to 3-0 and in conference with a three-set victory over Texas Pan American. He also picked up a straight-set win at norm- number four singles against Kennesaw State and number 60 Georgia State. That's going to do it for our show this week. We'll talk to you next Thursday afternoon here on Colonel Basketball Weekly, presented by State Farm Insurance. Today's show has been presented by State Farm. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. Rouse's, either you're local or you're not. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.